ஓம் ஸ்ரீ சாய்ராம் ஓம் ஸ்ரீ சாய்நாதாய நமகா ஓம் ஸ்ரீ சாய் பரபிரமணே நமகா டுடே வி வில் டிஸ்கஸ் ஸ்ரீ சாய் சச்சரிதா சாப்டர் டுவெண்டி எயிட் இன் திஸ் சாப்டர் வீ சி தட் ஹவ் பாபா ட்ரா ஹிஸ் டிவோட்டீஸ் டு ஷிர்டி and how he influenced them to come to shirdi and get his blessings and at the same time he can advance them in the spiritual path and in one case he definitely helped megha to attain moksha also so sai is not confined to just one place he kind of dwells in all the creation from brahma to small creatures like ants and flies he was well versed in the knowledge of the vedas and um, in the science of self realization that's why he was called a sadguru he almost like uh, some people can teach about self realization but they they should be able to make you experience this then only they will be called a sadguru that's why sai is sadguru not only he can teach you but more than teaching he would like to give you that experience by making you go through the steps and baba used to say often let the devotee be anywhere thousands of miles away from dwarka mai he will be drawn to shirdi like a sparrow with a thread tied to its feet so baba said these kind of things a lot of times and now we will see how different devotees came to shirdi and not only that how they had dreams of baba and different visions um that were given to the devotees one such story is that lala lakshmi chand he first worked in railways and then in a press he was like a munshi it is called uh, clerk he came in contact with baba around uh, 1910 one time he worked for the rally brothers who were greek merchants and they bought things from all over india and had their business establishments in different cities out of which bombay was the one so at that time he worked under one of the officers as a clerk like we talked about he was very honest and obedient and he was well liked by everybody there one of the officers also I mean liked him very much once he had a dream in which he saw a bearded old sadhu surrounded by devotees this mahatma was standing thus to whom he paid his loving reverence later he realized that this man was no none other than sai when he was listening to dasgana maharaj he then decided to visit shirdi and get baba's blessings baba always says my man can be in any place and he will be drawn to me with a string tied to his feet like a sparrow so we we talked about this sentence that baba recites all the time he tells his devotees all the time people not only heard them frequently but also experienced that also when one of his friends wanted him to go to shirdi then he realized that oh the time has come then he borrowed 15 rupees from his cousin 
and then they both take the train and while they were traveling they saw four Muslims in the train and uh, he inquires about Baba because they were from that area. On the way he thought about offering goas to Baba but forgets to buy them in Kopargam where they are available. Then at the outskirts of the Shirdi an old lady was seen selling these fruits. He tries to buy some but the lady gives away the whole basket to be offered to Baba. And then they reach the Shirdi, worship Baba with lots of devotion. Then Baba says, the rascal song peasants on the way and made inquiries of others. Why ask others? See everything with your eyes. Why ask anyone else? Is the dream true or not? Come to your own decision. What was the necessity of coming for darshan after borrowing money from a Marwadi? Is your heart's desire fulfilled now? So these are the words that Baba spoke and Lakshmi Chandra felt greatly surprised that Baba should have the knowledge of his inquiries that he had made on the way. Baba showed him that he knew everything that Lakshmi Chand was thinking about. This was to create the faith in him. Once he was so hungry and someone brought wheat pudding called Sanza and he loved it. Next day also he was hoping that someone will bring this. And during that time when, ba when somebody asked Baba what kind of food he wants that day, Baba immediately wanted this wheat pudding. And then some other time, Baba had severe cough and Lakshmi Chand felt that Baba probably had some evil eye. That's why he was coughing. Then immediately Baba tells Shama that his cough is because of some evil eye. All these instances gave Lakshmi Chand to believe in Baba and have more faith in Baba. He came to understand what Baba's power was and he became a very staunch devotee. So like this, the Lakshmi Chand was drawn to the Shirdi and um, he was given Baba's blessings also that way. And the next lady is Barhanpur lady. That's the way the Sai Sacharita talk about. This lady was married and her husband was working for the postal department. She had never seen Baba in person, but still she had a dream that Baba has come and is standing at her door asking for a meal of kichdi. She woke up immediately but found no one at that place. She told about her dream to everyone promptly. Then the couple decided to go to Shirdi to have a darshan of Baba and get his blessings. They stayed there for two months in Shirdi but for 14 days she could not offer her prasad to ba the Naivedya to Baba. Then on the 15th day when she goes to Dwarka Mai, curtains were closed. And at that time, everybody knows that when the curtains were closed, nobody was allowed to go in. But she opens the curtains and goes inside. Usually, no one is allowed, right? But Baba asks for Kichti immediately and whatever she brought, he eats all of it. Like this, Baba blessed his devotees not only by appearing in their dreams, but also bringing them to Shirdi at the right time. And the uh, next story is a very prominent and uh, well talked about in Sai Sacharita is the story of Mega. 
Mega is from Viramgaon and he was a simple, illiterate, uh, a Brahmin cook that Rao Bahadur um, Harivinayak Sate brought along with. He was a, a staunch devotee of Lord Shiva. He always chanted Namah Shivaya. And uh, he did not know much about all the mantras, the meanings, and he doesn't know about Gayatri mantra. So Mr. Sate was very interested in him and he wanted to teach him the Sandhya, Gayatri, all kinds of things. But he was very orthodox in his practices. So he was first reluctant to serve Baba as he thought he was Muslim. Then with the help of Vinayak Sate somehow convincing him to come to Shirdi, then he, they both come there and Mega, when he came to Dwarka Mai, Baba don't, don't let him, he doesn't let him to come into Dwarka Mai and surprises him by saying, beware. If you put your feet on the steps, this place is inhabited by Muslim. You are a high caste Brahmin, and I, the lowest of the low, a Muslim, you think. You will be defiled. Go back. So he was disappointed, Mega, and um, he returned home. He returned home, and uh, when he returned home, he could not really stay calm. So then he started thinking more about Baba again. And uh, at one point, people say that uh, he even went to one of the Shivatirdas. Um, he stayed there for a year and then comes back. But Another story says that he returned home where he fell sick and was confined to the bed. When he was in the bed, he was able to realize what Baba is and was thinking about Baba most of the time. And then he comes back to Shirdi and he continued to stay there. And he became very much devoted to Sahi. And there was no deity for him other than Sai. Sai was his uh, Shiva. He used to chant all the time, Sai Shankar, day and night. And uh, his inner self was merged in the form of Sai Shiva. And he became very pure and almost free of sin. And he also used to go very, very long distances to get bay leaves to worship Baba. One day he felt like getting water from Godavari River and he wanted to give a Abhishek to Baba. He asked Sai's permission for this and Baba reluctantly agrees with this but tells him that make sure the water does not fall on my body because the head is the most important thing. You just put the water on my head only. So Mega agrees with that. When he wanted to do the Ab Abhishek, he becomes so devotional that he puts all the water all over the bar Baba's body. But the miracle happens at that time to everyone's surprise that only Sai's head was wet, but the whole body was dry. This was really a miracle. Omega and everyone around there were amazed. So like this, I mean, Mega was blessed. Mega used to worship Baba at two places. While Baba was in the masjid, that is Dwarkamai, and he also worshipped him in the Vada also. He had a big Baba's picture 
given by Nana Sahib Chandorkar. This kind of puja he used to do, he did it for almost 12 months. Then, in order to appreciate his devotion and confirm his faith in Baba, Baba gives him a vision. One day, that is in the morning time, when Mega was still lying down on his bed with eyes closed, but he was awake internally, he saw clearly Baba's form. He <clears throat> immediately, knowing Baba, knowing him to be awake, threw rice grains, that is Akshata, marked red with kunkum, and said to Mega, draw a trident, that is Trishul, and uh, disappeared. Hearing Baba's words, he opens his eyes, saw nobody around there, because he saw clearly Baba there telling him. Then he kind of goes to Dwarka Mai and asks Baba, what happened? Uh, were you there? And then Baba says, did you not hear my words asking you to draw trident? It was no vision, but direct order. My words are always pregnant uh, with meaning and never hollow. And then Mega says, I thought you woke me up, but all the doors were closed. So I was doubtful and thought that it was a vision. And then Baba immediately says, I require no door to enter. I have no form. I always live everywhere. As a wire puller, I, car I carry on all the actions of the man who trusts me and merges in me. Then Mega goes back to Wada and um, draws a trident on the wall near the Baba's picture. Next day, a Ramadasi Bhakta comes from Pune and um, goes to Baba and offered him a Shivalinga. At this time, Mega also goes there and Baba tells him that, See, Shankar has come. Protect him now. Mega was pleasantly surprised to see Shivalinga. So like that, um, he was so amazed because there was a trident, Trishul, and then the Shivalinga comes. So at the same time, Dikshit was in the meditation. When he was in the meditation, um, he sees a vision of a, a Shivalinga also. And then when he saw this Shivalinga, who was, which was brought by the Ramdashi, it was the same Shivalinga that was given to Mega because Mega shows uh, the Dikshit about this Shivalinga. So they both were amazed uh, at the same time. Like this, he gave beautiful vision to both Mega and uh, um, Dikshit about the Shivalinga and the Trident. So like this, Baba blessed both of them. Since Mega liked to worship Shankar, by presenting him with the Shivalinga, Sai strengthened his devotion. So such are the marvelous narrations about Sai and the beautiful narrations that were given by Hemad Pant in this chapter. So we all are one time or the other sparrows of the Baba because we are also pulled to listen to his stories, to visit Shirdi. So we're also blessed as a, a satsang to listen to Baba stories and to admire and be devotional to our own Guru, the great Sai. With this, we will conclude today's satsang and uh, we will talk about other chapters in the coming satsangs. Om Sri Sai Nadhar Panamastu Om Sri Sai Ram Om Sri Sai Nadhaya Namaha Om Sri Sai Parabrahmane Namaha 
ओम श्री सच्चिदानंद सद्गुरु साईनाथ महाराज की जय